I like helping people. That's also why I have this YouTube channel. I like to share what I know. I get a lot of questions via Twitter, email, Instagram, whatever. And, and I really try to answer as many questions as I can, but I, it's, it's impossible to answer all the questions. I, there's just no time for it. I also have this subreddit live overflow where you can ask questions. And the great thing is that not only I can answer, but other people as well if they see it. So, so this is a great thing. If you have been answering questions to other people on there, thank you so much. Thank you. But I also want to thank people that write really good questions. One important rule I have for the subreddit is use expressive titles. So here I included two examples of like bad titles that were just noob here or noob help, which doesn't contain any information. And so I gave here a constructive example of what an alternative could look like and that would be way better. So for example, this first question here is talking about some stuff and a better title would have been should I learn C or Python with small examples or should I just read books? That would have been a way better title. Anyway, so let's see what kind of questions are here. Oh, look at this one. So this is not directly a question, but at least the title gives a good context. It's about exploiting buffer overflows. It's a Linux binary. And also this added detail that it's about statically linked and stripped. So I can assume that the person asking this question here has some issues or some trouble with getting around statically linked or stripped binaries. And look at this, there's an actual text. It's not just like a one liner. I like this. I want people to actually like explain what they have been trying. Maybe you remember my video, how not to ask a technical question where I was asking, please, please, please uh, include everything you can and explain everything you did because then uh, it's only possible to actually help you. So yeah, this person kind of did this and explained a little bit what, what the person was doing and trying. So I've been practicing different types of buffer overflows and can exploit simple ones on Windows and Linux machines. Now, however, I'm trying to teach myself reverse engineering as well, but I have hit a roadblock. I have an ELP executable, 64-bit, statically linked and stripped binary that has a buffer overflow vulnerability. And so far, I've downloaded the binary and ran the file command to find the previously stated information. Then I try to execute it, but I get a bind address already in use error. So I then ran S trace and it looks like the error message is hard coded. I can't run L trace, so I ran read elf to find the entry point of the program. GDB has been unsuccessful as well since there is no symbol table and I also receive a no registers error when I try and locate RIP or RBP. I ran strings as well and nothing is really jumping out at me since I don't see any buffer or vulnerable code such as string copy. I've tried researching what to do next and I believe I need to rebuild the symbol table, but I'm honestly lost and would appreciate if anyone could push me in the right direction. My main goal right now is just to understand the binary and figure out how to crash it. What the f is this? I make a whole f video explaining that if you do anything like with debugging and ex exploiting and shit, that you are copy and pasting all your output that I can actually follow what the f you did. And then I get stuff like, I ran S trace and it looks like the error message is hard coded. Where the f is that coming from? I don't know, show me the S trace output. What the f are you seeing? Have you Googled what bind does and what address already in use means? And then GDB is unsuccessful. Of, of course, from experience, I know what no symbol table means is, but I also received no register error when tried to locate RIP and RBP. That doesn't make any sense. Show me a goddamn GDB output, okay? Then that would be been so, so simple. Ah, here's, here's a really good response. This error means something else is already bound to that port. You could have two instances of the binary running or it's trying to bind to a port you already have a service on. Use as S TLPN to get a list of listening services and their respective ports. Then find the process ID of the process that's listening on the port it needs to bind and then uh, kill it. And look at that, thank you. I was able to find the process and kill it. But now when I run, nothing happens. Additionally to the advice already given regarding the connection to the port, uh, you should use S trace again. Uh, maybe you want to use S trace minus F to also follow forking children because it could be maybe that the uh, process is forking and that's why you didn't catch it because it happens in a different uh, process. It is something with networking, so there should be like a receive or something like that. You ran S trace minus F, but you don't see any receive calls. What the f does it mean? What do you see instead? So the person actually sent me the binary and then I was also able to have a quick look at it myself.
when I use that binary and I ex execute S trace, here I see the output, there's the call to bind, then I use netcat and send AAA to that port and then I see a receipt from. So I can't, I don't know why you don't see that. What do you do wrong? I have no clue, but it clearly is there. My output stops at XF3. Oh, okay, your output stops at XF3. Great, when you send, but clearly it, you do something wrong because if you would actually send it there, you should see a receive, so something else is going wrong. Again, where the f is the detailed technical information? I don't see anything here. Where's your uh, shell output? What, what the f are you doing? This is exactly the f***ing reason why I want technical output like this. Why the f*** didn't you provide this earlier? Because look at this, you, you call Python and you sent this output to the challenge server to Pwnable Praetorian 288. But you want to debug your local binary. Obviously you need to then connect to localhost. This is a typical mistake. This can easily happen. This, this probably happened to me before too. But people can't help you if you don't share your details. It's an easy mistake to spot. That's good why you ask and why other people should look at this more. Eyes can see more issues like this. Sometimes you, you are blind with the basic stuff. You don't even recognize that something like this um, is the issue. So I'm happy to tell you exactly what the f is wrong here. No shame there, but this could have been solved easily. Maybe even in the initial post, if you had just posted all your output and all the things and stuff you shit and stuff you do, then it would have been already clear. So yeah, this is a perfect example why it is so important that you take time with your question and include all the technical information as well. I'm the two-time Cybersecurity Challenge Germany winner 2013 and 2014. Send me your f command line output. And not just your whiny, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Show me what doesn't work. What exactly does it show? Holy f Okay, so this, this was obviously just a character. Please don't take my language too seriously. This was obviously just a little bit of a joke and a character. Uh, but I have to admit, it is kind of frustrating to get these questions. That's also why I made that video on how to not ask a technical question. But I also know that there is like a many to one relationship. The, the, the problem for me is that I get a lot of questions, right? I get, get so many questions. So seeing the same issues and this same pattern of not providing enough information is really, really frustrating. And sometimes I can get a little bit mad, a little bit angry, you know. I, I know I shouldn't because for the person that is asking, it's just a single connection. And obviously, if you have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with somebody, you are a lot more chill, obviously. And so it can, from the perspective of the person asking, it can maybe look, look a little bit mean when the person like me gets a bit frustrated uh, with, with the question because, you know, there's no need to be frustrated. So anybody who has asked me questions and I've gotten a bit frustrated, I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, typically, I also say sorry about this because I, I know that I shouldn't be frustrated. And I hope you can empathize with me that I get a lot of these questions and just like the mass gets very frustrating because it's time consuming. I don't have time to address everything. So it's, it's taking my time away, but it's also taking away attention in time that I could give to other people. And it's not just for me, it's, 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 it applies to any questions you ask online, like the subreddit, Live Overflow or Stack Overflow or wherever you're asking. So sorry, Cookie, for this uh, very strong language. I hope you didn't feel uh, attacked by this. Um, uh, th this, this was really me just like acting a little bit and obviously e exaggerating the situation. And, and I hope you don't mind that I use you now as an example to kind of like make a point because I would like to use this kind of video to also then share with people when they ask questions to highlight again what I'm looking for, what the kind of information it is that I would need. Also, a small little detail here. So this challenge is part of like a recruiting company challenge. And the person didn't mention this at the start of the question, which always makes me feel a little bit uh, like, why are you not straightforward with this? Why are you not saying what it's for? Because then when I find out that it's like a, a CTF that is actively running right now, or it's even part of a challenge where you can win money or where it's for a job, I, it always feels a little bit cheating. So be upfront with it. I actually would love to help you when it's like a job kind of thing. So, so please be upfront with this because this also influences uh, how to react uh, to these questions and be a bit more guiding rather than telling. You might think that I would not want to help you when it's like a job application kind of challenge, but it's actually the contrary is true. I'm glad that you find motivation to try out such a challenge and you want to apply. And I would love to help you and uh, teach you based on that challenge. And you're applying for a job. You are not in school anymore, okay? You don't necessarily need to sit there alone. You are Googling and researching all the time anyway that's part of the job. 
a, having a good network and asking other people for advice and help in your job is also a helpful skill. So recognizing where you need help and being able to ask the correct questions and reaching out to the right people, that's part, that's a good skill. I'm obviously not solving it for you, but I'm, I'm happy if I can help with uh, your process there. Just be honest with yourself in the end that you didn't quite solve it yourself. And maybe in the interview process, uh, you can even talk about this, that it was tough on you uh, and you needed a lot of research. But a tough challenge doesn't stop you, right? This shows dedication. This shows that you have the smartness to power through that and be able to learn. Maybe the job is for an experienced senior position and they want already a lot of experience. That could be, but then you already also know that maybe it's not the position for you. But if they are generally a bit more open with their job description and it's more like a junior position or an entry level position, then I think this actually would look great that, that you were able to identify where your weakness is and that you were able to help yourself and that you in the end were able to find the resources that were necessary to be able to solve that. I think that is mostly a positive thing. And I guess with uh, active CTFs, if it's just a weekend, then also just wait until the CTF is over. Just wait two days and then uh, talk to the people that solved it and look at write-ups. Like at this point, it's kind of just cheating if you then are asking because you will get the solution anyway. I want to help you when you can't figure it out. And the fact that you could figure it out two days later with write-ups from other people, then that should be sufficient. Anyway, keep the questions coming. And I'm sorry for when I get maybe a little bit uh, angry and frustrated in my uh, responses. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Um, but please let me have that, okay? I'm frustrated, but I'm still helping you, okay? I might, I might uh, have a little bit of a strong language, but I'm still helping you. I'm still here. My goal is still to help you. Just, just let me have my little bit of frustration, okay? That, that would be really, really great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyway, I hope this wasn't too bad. See you tomorrow.